There has been this long-standing mystery, I think since the 1940s, about rocks, uh, primarily in Death Valley, California, where rocks seem to be moving all by itself across the desert. And there are many pictures of this where rocks seem to have slid across the desert. And you can see a picture here, um, see a picture here. And, you know, the wind doesn't account for it because these rocks are very large. And the trail that the rocks leave behind is one where the rocks seem to be pushed along. And there has been no answer as to how this was being done. And um, just recently, just recently, um, the solution and uh, discovery, discovery was made as to how these rocks have been moved and slid across the desert. So in this video, I am going to explain the mystery behind the sliding rocks across Death Valley. So the solution to these mysterious sliding rocks is actually pretty simple, even though scientists have been baffled uh, by them for several years. First, we need to understand that Death Valley, even though it is extremely hot, um, can actually be, you know, kind of cold. You know, it's called Death Valley, so it is really, really hot. And in July, you can see um, a record high of 134 degrees um, in July. But there are times uh, in the winter months where it does get rain and it does cool down at night. So average low in January was 40 degrees, 46 in February. But if we look at the record low, we see 15 degrees, 21 degrees, 26 degrees. And we go down over in December, uh, 21 degrees, 30 degrees in November. So there are times in Death Valley where you have both rain and very cool temperatures. So given that, um, what, we, what scientists have found during those winter months where it can rain, there are times when you'll get several days of rain, and the rain will accumulate and kind of make a pond, and you end up with, you know, a few inches of rain, rain, kind of like, you know, a small flood in an area. Um, and then at night, the temperatures would drop down, and you would get small layers of ice floating on the water. Okay? Now, these small layers of ice would float on the water, and then when you get a wind and the wind doesn't have to be extremely strong just enough for these layers of ice to float along the water and drift and these layers of ice would float and push against the rock and then the rock would eventually move not very fast but it would be enough to move that rock along and maybe it you know not just one section of ice maybe a, a, another section of ice would then push the rock. If we take kind of an aerial view of the rock, um, you know, if I draw the rock over here, and this is, you know, the, the top view, we're looking at it from the sky, and then maybe here's our, you know, section of ice, and even though the, the thickness of the ice might only be as thick as, you know, the, your window, just a centimeter, centimeter or two, um, it could be very large, and it's pushing the rock, um, and that would be enough to, you know, get that rock moving. And one of the things that might contribute to it is the fact that the rock was, or is, in water. And water, you know, tends to make those objects a little bit lighter. You're lighter when you go into the pool. And so the rock is a little bit lighter. You have a big section of ice. And then you might have another section of ice pushing, and so you have the wind pushing the sections of ice, and then you end up with the rock moving. So we have, you know, you know, a few things in play. We have the water pushing it. We have wind pushing the ice, and those things combined, and you end up with the sliding rocks. So. That's what happens. That's what the scientists have discovered. Uh, mystery solved. Thanks for watching.